Well, as I mentioned, one of the interesting things about wandering around here in, in the office buildings at the Capitol is you run into some interesting groups of people. This morning we run, run into a group called Docs for Patient Care, which is a national organization of, of actual real live doctors, not the made up doctors that Obama likes to trot out, that are actually trying to affect change in the, in the healthcare industry. Dr. Rubin, if you could introduce your colleagues here, I'd be happy to. On my far left is Dr. Stuart Clota. He's an emergency medicine doctor from New York City. The president and founder of our organization, Dr. Hal Schurz, is a pediatric urologist in Atlanta. Myself, I'm an anesthesiologist in private practice in Georgia as well. Wayne Kowalek is an ER doctor from Ohio. Dr. Miliana Blokar is a practicing psychiatrist in New York City. And on the end, Dr. Tony Licata also an anesthesiologist in private practice in Ohio. And of course, Ohio being one of the battleground states, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. But if you could tell us a little bit about what your organization is trying to accomplish and why you're here in the halls of Congress today. Well, our primary concern is being practicing physicians. We're all obviously very concerned about the quality of health care going forward as a result of the Affordable Care Act. We're here to help lawmakers understand what the negative consequences are of that law and to offer a better path forward. Practicing doctors were never, our, our perspective and years and years of experience were never considered when this law was being debated through Congress. And we're here to help them understand that although we agree there needs to be universal access and every American should be able to have affordable access to high quality health care, we think there's another mechanism by which we should get there. And the Affordable Care Act certainly is not affordable and it's not protective of patients. And we're here to offer our perspective and our suggestions. If you go to our website, www.d4pc.org, we've composed a what we call a prescription for responsible health insurance reform. And we basically lay our plan out in eight different points. They're easy to understand and we, we think that most Americans would feel that those are common sense, practical and affordable solutions to what else our current problems, you know, in our healthcare system. Uh, Dr. Rubin, I noticed your button says you built this practice and across the country there are millions of private businesses that are struggling to build small businesses. Healthcare is a major concern for them because many times they're out competing or not competing but trying to get health care insurance as an individual or as a small very small company uh, much like our company sure. what does your proposal do for the small business person well probably the most practical alternative we provide is that there needs to be a change in the current tax law right now most Americans who have private health insurance get it because it's employer sponsored your employer derives a tremendous tax benefit as a result of government regulation, government rules, um, people in the small business market, individual market, don't enjoy that, that luxury. Right. They have to provide health insurance with after-tax dollars. If we can change the tax code to allow those people to compete with the rest of us and, and unleash the, you know, promote the competition in the insurance marketplace, that would one one way, one mechanism to make health insurance more affordable. And, and more importantly, once people can enjoy that tax benefit, they will own their insurance, it will become portable, will not be tied into employment, and patients will actually be able to take that insurance throughout their entire life. And that would right there eliminate the pre-existing condition, you know, penalty that, that, that the currently plagues our healthcare system. Right. We think that's a great way going forward, not addressed in this current healthcare bill. And Governor Romney yesterday was talking about trying to find protections for pre-existing uh, conditions issue and so that would be a good solution for them. Absolutely. Dr. Kowalik, you're you're not only in the battleground state of Ohio, it sounds like you're actually in the battleground zip code of Ohio. Seems to be. <laughs> so uh, what are you doing in, in that area? What's going on with Governor Romney's campaign up there and, and how do we affect change in, in this issue? Well I've been here over the weekend but I heard someone from the campaign actually landed in our zip code uh, and is uh, mustering troops to make uh, phone calls uh, to those who are, in fact, undecided in their choice uh, in, in November. Uh, my wife and son, who generally accompany me on this trip, stayed home, and both of them are, in fact, making calls on behalf of uh, Mr. Romney and, and his campaign. And uh, my nine-and-a-half-year-old's been quite successful in being able to honor a 
fair bit of attention, and people are actually listening to him. He's doing very, very well in his efforts. I hope to join those upon my return in the next day or two. We've been uh, covering the issue of the Delphi salaried retirees who basically had their pensions stripped away from them, and, and Ohio is one of the, the battleground areas of that. Uh, I know President Obama likes to talk about the people who have earned things and they're entitled to their retirement, but yet he went out and, and literally stole these people's retirement jobs. It's interesting. I happen to work in that area. I work uh, in urgent care work down in Cortland and Warren, Ohio, which is where Delphi is, in fact, or was, in fact, headquartered. As, as a result, all the plants, in fact, are closed. And these people are truly living as a result of uh, their uh, health care uh, and their retirements being completely stripped away from them. Mm -hmm. big, uh, big political move. On, on, on. And they're very disappointed, obviously. And uh, the other issue the Democrats like to attack on is that the Republicans are engaged in a war on women, which uh, I, I think is certainly not the case in, in any situation. But can you address women's perspective on health care and, and how that is affected? Well, um, not too long ago, there was a proposition to actually limit women's access to the mammograms mm -hmm. because somebody decided that it is really not cost-effective. Although, you know, we know medically that may not be cost-effective, but saves tremendous number of lives mm -hmm. for those for whom uh, early detention is of importance. That proposal came from the Democrats, right. not from the Republicans. Under the current administration? Under the current administration. And if you cannot feed your children, I think that's real war on women right. and war on children if you cannot find jobs. So, you know, I, I have not seen my Republican colleagues mistreating their wives, and if the only litmus test is abortion under any of the circumstances, including late-term abortion, if that's the only litmus test for love for women, I would say, you know, that is really like putting everything upside down. And while President Obama was a state senator in Illinois, he never could seem to find his way to vote on a lot of issues. And yet, four times he voted for a bill that would prohibit doctors like yourselves from delivering patient care to a baby that survived an abortion attempt. That's four right. times he voted That's in right. favor. That's right. There is no respect for sanctity of life. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is more of life and life. And Dr. Lukaka, okay. mm -hmm. you're also from Ohio? What part of Ohio are you in? I'm from Dayton. Okay. And uh, what's the battleground state like in, in your area? Uh, yeah, it's going to be close, I think. Uh, I'm going to try to go back from this meeting. It's the first one of these meetings I've attended and try to uh, get some of my colleagues involved and uh, try to get involved in not only uh, this organization, which I think has a number of great uh, free market solutions uh, to the healthcare care issues. None of, us, none of us think that things can last the way they were, and we need to have some alternatives, and these are great alternatives but also uh, hopefully we can get uh, those same people involved in the, in the Romney campaign. Okay. And would either of you like to, to say anything to our readers at Texas GOP Vote about the health care issue? I'd be happy to. Yeah. Um, well, uh, first of all, we're at a crossroads right now. There is um, the Affordable Care Act, and that's put us on a pathway to one health care reality. And that healthcare reality is going to be bleak for the American public. It's going to be a future that is going to be uh, a government-run healthcare system. Healthcare decisions are going to come out of Washington, D.C., not out of your physician's office. It's going to be a future where there are going to be less doctors taking care of patients. There will be more non-physicians taking care of patients. There will be more doctors imported from around the world whose credentials we don't know of, so it will be a pathway to citizenship for people from all over the country who claim they can practice medicine. There will be attempts to nationalize the medical profession, which will make this problem even worse. There currently is a significant physician shortage. That shortage is critical now. It will become a national emergency if we stay down this pathway of Obamacare. That's one reality. The other reality is changing where we are right now. And there's a choice on November 6th because the other reality is a reality where we will have 
patients in charge of their own health care, where patients will be making their own decisions about how their, their loved ones, how they, how their children, how their parents are taken care of, and who's going to take care of them, and where that care is going to be delivered, and not somebody in Washington telling them that they can't have a knee replacement, or they're too old for dialysis, or they're not going to pay for certain treatments that are going to discourage physicians from taking care of their family. And so the choice for me is, is an obvious one. It's quite clear that there's only one reality that makes sense for our country, and that is to, to vote for, um, for a Republican House, a Republican Senate, a Republican in the White House who committed to repealing Obamacare and replacing it with reforms that make sense, and that's what docs for patient care is all about. It's about offering solutions so that uh, we can uh, um, right the ship, put the train back on the appropriate track, and be able to uh, uh, give the proper um, uh, respect to health care reform, because you're not going to find any physicians who agree that the status quo is okay. We need reform, but what we got was not health care reform. What we got was increased taxes and increased control. So your, your viewers should uh, go to our website, Docs for Patient Care. That's docs number four, patientcare.org, and help us out. We, um, we can use your financial help, and we can also use you to tell your physicians that, um, that, that if they're not part of the solution, and we think we're part of the solution, then they're part of the problem. Dr. Plota? Oh, sure. So I actually have my own private practice where I do long appointments, and so I started talking to as many patients as I can. Um, about the ACA and that basically what it's going to do is destroy the physician-patient uh, relationship. Um, most people want to see their own physician and the ACA is basically driving people, um, physicians out of private practice um, and into hospital employment which is basically now uh, ACOs which is a revamp version, a redone HMO and I think everyone pretty much knows what a disaster that was uh, for patients um, in the past. So what will happen is uh, patients aren't going to necessarily have their own physician and will be essentially in a way forced to see whichever physician um, is available. And the other thing is that it may not even be a physician, there's a good chance that it's going to be a non-physician uh, such as a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant um, who has a lot less training and experience. And again, people in the U.S. are used to having um, a high level of medical care and being driven into basically an HMO type si system, um, it's going to be a lot harder for them to get that uh, high level of service. Um, being employed doesn't necessarily um, always bring out the best in people and you have um, an administrator um, coming in between uh, the physician and the patient and of course that's what a lot of this is about um, is maintaining and preserving the physician-patient relationship. Okay. Okay. Yes. Just say the one thing. Okay. I grew up in a communist country and in a socialized medicine which the system was beyond broken down. Yes, everybody had accessible care, except care was just not available. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and to see then this turn in this country that I love so much, and in this country that somehow refuses, this big segment of the society refuses to learn from the experiences of the others. We, we've gone down this road in so many places, and partially in this place, and still stubbornly to continue you know, this way. It's really quite disheartening. Thank you. As you've heard from these doctors here today, there's probably not an issue that's ever been before the American public that hits each and every one of you as personal as your own personal health care choices and being able to make those choices for yourselves and your family. So we want to thank you, you all for coming out and representing 
doctors and patients here in the capital where we have not been represented very well during the creation of this process. We want to encourage everyone to get out and vote in November to make the changes that we need.